Today I'm going to be doing various aquarium tests for the water quality. First I'm going to be doing a pH test. I got my clean test tube right here. I'm going to be going in the aquarium, filling it up, emptying it, filling it up again, emptying it. What I'm doing is making sure I just get aquarium water in there. I don't want any of the tap water that I just cleaned it out with affecting my results. It'll be more accurate this way. What I just did is filled it up to the line. Now I'm going to take the test tube cap. That will also be cleaned out in the aquarium water to make sure it doesn't affect the test. Now with this test, you shake it up, then you add three drops of the solution to the water. Okay, one, two, three. You see it? It turned into a bluish color. I'm going to put it up to my color chart. Get some light through it so you can see. It is around the 7.4 range. That's pretty close to neutral. That's fine. It would be bad if it was up near 8. That is too high of a pH. If it was below like 6, 8, I'd add some baking soda to get it up there. Okay, I'm going to put this test tube off to the side. I have many test tubes, so I don't have to keep running over to the sink to clean them out. I have another test tube right here. And I got another cap. This time I'm going to be testing for ammonia. The ammonia kit comes with two bottles of solution, number one and number two. All of these tests come with a salt water and fresh water kit. Okay, I'm, there's the color chart. Just like before, I'm going to rinse this test tube out a few times in the water. And try to get it as close to that line as I can. There I go. Rinse out the cap. Now these ammonia tests require you to put eight drops of each after shaking. And here's bottle number one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. These chemicals you do not want to get in the aquarium. That's why you always rinse them out in the sink before putting them back in the aquarium. Also, I just put eight of that. Put the cap on. I'm going to shake this up. Okay, this is what it came out with. A very light yellow. And here's the color chart. I'm holding it up to the light. And it has little or no ammonia parts per million. It's showing yellow, which is nothing. If it was a little bit green, there's no big deal. If you get up there into the darker g greens, that's when you have a problem in the aquarium. But this test came out perfect. I'm going to put that off to the side with my other test tubes. And I'm going to put these tests back in their box really quickly. And I'm going to start up with another test for the aquarium. This one is nitrate. 
This one has its color card, which uses shades of orange. This one also has two bottles of solution. With this test, you put 10 drops of each in. I'm going to get another test tube out and another cap. Quickly rinse them out in the aquarium. Okay, I got it close to the line. Cap rinsed out. Here's bottle number one. Ten drops. All these bottles are really hard to open because they're childproof. Yep, this test you saw I accidentally put 11 drops of chemical 2. If this test turns out very bad, I will do a retest with it. And you see on the board, it is showing up a light orange. Just give me a second, I'm gonna redo this test really quickly. Okay, I just did a retest on this. And it's showing pretty much the same thing. About five. Which is a little bit. Not too bad. Now the next test I'm going to be doing nitrite now the difference between these this one is dangerous for fish this one's not so dangerous for fish this one helps plants grow a lot of this helps plants grow so having that in the water in my last test is not a big deal now this next one, hopefully, there's not a lot of this one in there. I'm going to get my color chart out of the box. This one, it says fresh and salt water. They both use the same chart in this test. This one only comes with one bottle of the solution. Here's another clean test tube. I'm going to go ahead and rinse that off. And this one, you add five drops of the solution. Now shake. And on the color chart, it's absolutely perfect. You see it's that really light blue. Purples are dangerous, but it's light blue. That one's perfect. 
Now, I have some other test kits with me that there's really no need to test for them, but I could. I have one, it's for iron. I'm not going to test for this one because there's really no iron in the water around here. I've tested it before, it usually comes out near zero. And here's a copper test. Also, I've tested around here. There's no copper in the water. And this isn't something that would just form in the aquarium by itself. This is from bad plumbing, or bad city plumbing, if you get city water. But, just for the video, I'll do the copper test. This one has one solution. And this test actually works differently than the others. This one has circles. Shake the solution up. I got another clean test tube here. Another clean cap. I'm going to go ahead and clean this out in the aquarium. Clean out the cap. And this one uses 10 drops. Shake this one up. And this test, the way this one works is a little bit differently. This one you have to take the cover off and you lay this chart down next to it and from overhead you look down and you try to see where does it line up and you see there's no color so there's absolutely no copper in this water. There was one time I noticed there was all kinds of corrosion around a water fountain. So I took a sample from a public water fountain. And it was up near 2, probably because nobody really used it. But if you flush your pipes, like in your house, you're constantly doing things. That's not going to happen. And here's the other colors. It's actually pretty colorful once you're done with it. And if, like I was showing the pH, that pH is a little bit on the high side for these kind of fish, but it's not dangerously high. If your pH is low, you can simply just add like a teaspoon of baking soda, wait like an hour for the tank to circulate, test it again, and keep adding more baking soda until it's up where you want it. And they do have pH down, which is this acid you can add to the aquarium to bring it down. But that's kind of expensive here. If I have something that brings the pH up, I'll just do a partial water change to get it down. That always works for me. I'm actually going to be doing a partial water change in a moment. I'm going to be cleaning the gravel in this aquarium because I haven't done so in a few months. Also, if you have things in the aquarium such as coral or shells or even crushed coral gravel, that will bring the pH up or it will help maintain a good pH. Probably during the video you saw the Placo come out. I'm not sure if that was hidden or not, but there's the Placo inside the cave. There's the Jack Dempsey fish. I'm going to go clean these test tubes out in the sink. And once I do that, I'll be able to do it next time. They'll be clean and ready to go.
Thanks for watching.